ठीक है Alright everybody, I'm back. Assalamualaikum. Alright, uh, today we'll study the second last component of endocrinology, which is calcium homeostasis. Alright, homeostasis. Alright. Okay. Before we start, today we'll talk about the parathyroid glands. Okay. You see, on the thyroid, para means above. Ask not please. Para means above. Okay. So when we say parathyroid, that means on the thyroid. Okay. All right. So calcium is the major extracellular divalent cation, and it is primarily uh, 40 to 50 percent existing as free ionized calcium. Approximately 40 percent of serum calcium is bound to plasma protein, especially albumin, with the remaining 10 percent complex to such anions such as citrate. So the drugs which are affecting calcium homeostasis and literally you need to memorize it by heart, okay? So they those drugs are parathyroid hormone and when we talk about it, we'll be discussing um, teriparatide and then we'll discuss role of calcitonin and then we'll discuss role of vitamin D and its metabolites, all right? In, um, in uh, controlling the amount of calcium in the body okay all right so parathyroid hormone when we talk about the structure so it's a 84 amino acid peptide secreted by the parathyroid gland in response to low serum ionized calcium i i want um a kind of a favor from you guys okay i want one child with good handwriting to summarize for everybody that what has how many amino acids okay or any special thing which you want to summarize okay summarize it give it to me i will upload it in the google classroom so in a way you will help everybody around okay uh, please do that and i want to see who is the one who will do it okay all right and even if your handwriting is not that good you can type it you can type it on excel sheet make a summary or even on word document you can make a summary all right and then uh, give it to me and then i'll upload it in the google classroom so that everybody will be helped by your creativity then we have agents such as beta adrenoreceptor agonists which increase cmp in the parathyroid gland cause an increase in pth secretion okay so when we talk about action and pharmacological properties of pth so that is activity in the kidney and in bone is mediated by specific PTH receptors, which are in turn coupled to an increase in CMP level. Uh, significant quantities of CMP are found in the urine after PTH stimulation. So uh, other pharmacologies include uh, pharmacological actions include. Wait, okay, so in bone. PTH can increase both the rate of bone formation and bone resorption. This is mediated by cytokines such as Rankil, which is also known as osteoprotegrin, uh, uh, ligand, which produces osteoblasts that regulate the number and activity of osteoclasts. So you see osteoclast, uh, remember that it is... Uh, it is a cell, okay, which breaks down the bone, okay, and the blast one creates one, okay. All right, so continuous exposure to PTH results in net bone resorption. Pulsatile exposure results in net bone formation, okay. So in the kidney, PTH increases the reabsorption of calcium and magnesium and increases production of uh, 25, 125-hydroxy D3 from uh, one hydroxylase step, okay? So, uh, PTH also decreases reabsorption of phosphate, biocarbonate, amino acid sulfate, sodium and chloride. So, in the GIT, PTH increases intestinal absorption of calcium 
ions indirectly by increasing the quantity of 125 hydroxy uh, D3. Okay, so PDH is rapidly degraded. The half life is just two to five minutes by renal and hepatic metabolism. Then we have teriparate, per, teriparatide. So teriparatide is recombinant human PTH. Okay. So if you, uh, what is recombinant human PTH? Recombinant human PTH is the one which you have produced by using bio uh, genetic engineering, okay, by using biotechnology. Okay, so uh, what happens is that you take the uh, bacterial plasmid, okay, you take the human gene, all right, and then you insert it into the plasmid and then you put it back into the bacteria. And then you put it in the fermenter and in the process parathyroid hormone is being produced okay so uh, teriparatide is administered parenterally once a day and it and this intermittent exposure results in net bone formation so it is used in treatment of osteoporosis it is also used as a diagnostic agent to distinguish pseudo hypoparathyroidism from true hypoparathyroidism pseudo means a false alarm okay so major adverse effects are hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria infrequent adverse effects include depression pain headache and neck cramps Now we will talk about calcitonin. Calcitonin, if you know, it is also released naturally. Okay. So calcitonin is a 32 amino acid peptide secreted by perifollicular cells of thyroid gland in response to elevated plasma calcium. Okay. Now, if it is released in response to the calcium, all right, which is elevated, it means what is cal calcitonin doing? Any idea? Here we were we were trying to increase, right? We were trying to do osteoporosis. We were trying to increase it, right? Now here, when we are saying that it is uh, produced when calcium is uh, a lot in the plasma, so that means we are antagonizing, okay? The action that was uh, done by the PTH, okay? So gastrin glucagon. Uh, cholecystokinin and epinephrine can also increase calcitonin secretion. So the actions are calcitonin antagonizes the actions of PTH through an independent mechanism. So calcitonin interferes with rece specific receptors on osteoclasts to decrease net resorption of calcium. Calcitonin may also stimulate bone formation. Asma Please shut the door. Okay. Calcitonin increases renal excretion of calcium, sodium, and phosphate. Okay. So it is basically decreasing the plasma calcium level by either depositing it into the bone. Okay. By stimulating the bone formation or it is releasing into the urine. All right. Okay. So pharmacological properties. Synthetic. Salmon calcitonin differs from the human calcitonin at 13 of the 32 amino acid and has a longer half-life. Currently approved products are administered parenterally or as nasal sprays. So decrease in plasma calcium are seen in 2 hours and persist for 6 to 8 hours. Therapeutic uses uh, calcitonin reduces hypercalcemia due to painted disease so this this disease is a disease in which you know the bones get sensitive okay they they start to um, they become more fragile okay and then uh, they can be influenced they can be broken down as well okay 
all right so uh, hypercalcemia happens okay because the bones are getting fragile okay so um it also can be due to hyperparathyroidism idiopathic juvenile hypercalcemia vitamin d intoxication osteolytic bone disorder and osteoporosis so patients frequently become refractory to chronic administration refractory means that they will not respond okay possibly it's because of the production of anti calcitonin antibody then we have vitamin d and its metabolites so the structure is the calciferols vitamin d3 and vitamin d2 are secosteroid members of the steroid hormone family so when we talk about synthesis we all know especially during covid everybody was so much worried uh, still they are worried that we are not getting enough sunlight right so vitamin d3 is produced in the skin from cholesterol the synthesis requires exposure to the ultraviolet light right when we talk about d3 so calciferol is produced in liver by hydroxylation of vitamin d3 okay uh, that is uh, calciferol uh, okay so this is produced by the liver okay and it is most abundant calciferol metabolite in the plasma then we'll talk about calcitriol which is another metabolite so calcitriol is produced in the kidney by further hydroxylation all right of uh, the 25 hydroxy d3 by 1 alpha hydroxylase regulation of 1 alpha hydroxylase activity determines the serum level of calcitriol so enzymatic activity is increased by pth estrogens prolactin and other agents and it is decreased by these agents okay which have the direct effect then calci uh, calcitriol is the most active metabolite of d3 then the other metabolite of vitamin d is uh, uh, vitamin d2 that is ergocalciferol so vitamin d2 is derived from plant metabolism of uh, ergosterol and has a slightly different side chain which does not alter its biological activity in human so in human vitamin d2 is metabolized in the same manner as d3 and appears to be bioequivalent then the fifth metabolite we want to talk is pericalciterol it is a 125 hydroxylated vitamin d2 derived uh derivative that reduces serum pth level without affecting serum calcium or phosphate level it is approved for the treatment of hyperparathyroidism in patients with renal failure who are on dialysis it is administered by infusion then the sixth metabolite is 22 oxacalcitriol so it is a 125 oh twice uh, d3 derivative containing an oxygen instead of a carbon at position 22 in the side chain compared with 125 d3 it binds with low affinity to the serum vitamin d binding globulin it is a potent suppressor of pth and is useful in patients with secondary uh, or primary hyperparathyroidism then the seventh metabolite is uh doxorecalciferol and it is administered orally or through iv for hyperparathyroidism secondary to renal failure it does not increase uh, uh, intestinal calcium okay this is not one this is plus absorption and does not cause hyperkalemia minute the 
this is that I don't know. Okay. All right. Absorption and does not cause hypercalcemia. Then the eighth metabolite we want to talk is calci uh, portrion. So it is a 1,24-dihydroxy D3 derivative for topical administration for the treatment of skin disorders such as psoriasis. So it has reduced effect on calcium homeostasis. So pharmacological properties when we talk about so calcitriol increases the plasma level of both calcium and phosphate by acting on several organ systems so in intestine increase they increase calcium absorption in bone they mobilize uh, calcium and phosphate by the stimulation of calcium uh, calcium flux out of osteoblasts then in kidney they increase reabsorption of both calcium and phosphate. Uh, then we have all vitamin D metabolites bind to a specific binding protein, vitamin D binding protein. So vitamin D, calcifidiol, uh, and calcitriol are all administered orally. Calcitriol may be administered parenterally. When we talk about therapeutic uses, so elevated calcium, uh, serum cal in the case of elevated serum calcium, okay, so vitamin D and vitamin D metabolites are used to treat hypocalcemia, okay, so caused by a number of diseases including vitamin D deficiency, that is the nutritional rickets, and then um, that produces the rickets, okay. Then we have hypoparathyroidism renal disease, malabsorption, and osteoporosis. Uh, the second therapeutic use is to treat uh, reduced cellular proliferation. Okay, recent evidence has shown that 125-dihydroxy uh, D3 can block differentiation and proliferation of many cell types. For this reason, the drug has been successfully used in the treatment of certain leukemias. So, topical calci for trien has been approved for the treatment of cirrhosis. It reduces fibroblast proliferation and induces differentiation of uh, epidermal. Wait a minute. Epidermal keratinocytes wait a minute everybody i'm so sorry today we have some glitches okay then the next category we want to talk is <clears throat> uh bispho uh phosphonates so when we talk about the chemistry and pharmacokinetics of these so bisphosphonates are analogs of uh pyrophosphate that bind directly to hydroxy epitate crystal in bone and impair reabsorption. So the first generation bisphosphonate include etidronate disodium and the second generation contain as nitrogen. Okay, so they are called as amino bisphosphonate and they include alindronate Ibandronate, Tiludronate, and Pemidronate. They are at least 10 times more potent than first generation agents. So, third generation bisphosphonates are Restronate and Zol, uh, Zoldronic acid. So, they have a nitrogen with a uh, heterocyclic ring and are 10,000 times more potent than the first generation agents. So after oral administration, all bisphosphonates have very poor oral absorption that is decreased by food. Then we have etidronate especially is associated with esophageal irritation and erosion. 
the recommendation is to administer on an empty stomach with a full glass of water and remain standing for 30 minutes okay so this is peculiar about this drug all right then we have etidronate so that is a first bisphosphonate that was discovered its mechanism of action is that the non-nitrogenous bisphosphonates are internalized by osteoclasts and are then converted into an ATP analog that cannot be hydrolyzed. So this metabolite impairs various functions and induces apoptosis in osteoclasts. This can be administered through IV or oral method. Then uh, we have amino bisphosphonate that we talked earlier. So the mechanism of action is inhibition of uh, phenyl uh, diphosphate synthase, part of cholesterol biosynthetic pathway. So this impairs post-translational modification of a number of regulator protein critical for osteoclast function, including RAS, Rho, and RAC. So they, there is recent evidence that amino bisphosphonates also induce a unique ATP analog that induces osteoclast optic apoptosis. Okay, so poorly absorbed can be given by infusion. Then uh, dilandronate once per year. Uh, then we have amino bisphosphonates are not associated with the problems of reflux or osteomalacia then we have the uses so pager disease uh, in the in this we use it given orally clinical symptoms improve relatively slow that is one to three months then we have effective calcium uh wait a minute wait a minute i will speak first okay okay so effective in 60 to 70 percent of cases normalization of serum calcium levels in two to three days then we have uh, wait a minute then we have high uh, heterotropic ossification uh, one of the uses then we have uh, amino bisphosphonates are proof for the prevention of osteoporosis adverse effects are GI dis disturbance including GI bleeding and diarrhea, atralgia, and non-specified chest pain. When used for prolonged periods, um, it can interfere with mineralization of bone, that is osteomalacia. Uh, so rare instances of uh, osteonecrosis of the jaw can be related to this. Then we have uh, denosumab. So this is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the action of um, this ligand that is osteoprotegral. Uh, so it, this reduces osteoclast proliferation and activation. Approved for the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis and for reducing the risk of bone loss and bone metastasis in patients with solid tumors. So efficacy at reducing bone loss is comparable to that of bisphosphonates. Then uh, we have calcium sensor uh, sensitizer, that is calcimimetics. So the parathyroid gland senses calcium via the action of the protein, which is CASR. So activation of this protein it reduces the amount of PTH synthesis, synthesis and release of by the gland. Then we have senacalcate. It's an oral agent that acts similar to calcium on the uh, CSR. This reduces the serum PTH level. Uh, it is approved for use in patients with hyperparathyroidism secondary to renal disease. It is the major adverse effect of uh, Senna calcite. Then we have secondary agents which are affecting homeostasis. So uh, I'm sure we all can relate to it. 
because we have studied about it um, in the previous uh, few of the previous classes. Okay, wait a minute, everybody. Give me one second. Wait a minute. So, uh, first of all, we have thiazide diuretics. I'm sure uh, you studied about it last year when you would be uh, doing CBS. So, thiazide diuretics reduce the renal excretion of calcium and the incidences of kidney stone formation in patients with idiopathic hypercalciuria. Then, I'm sure you must have studied about loop diuretics. So these are the agents such as furosemide, which increase the renal excretion of calcium. Then we have glucocorticoids, which increase bone resorption and reduce intestinal absorption of calcium by interfering with the uh, 125-dihydroxy D3. The net effect is to reduce calcium uh, levels in plasma. Then estrogens, uh, so they indirectly impair the action of pth on bone and in the kidney so it is used in the treatment of osteoporosis then uh, we'll talk about the calcium supplements so calcium supplements are available in a variety of calcium concentration and parenteral and oral formulation so calcium supplements are useful as a dietary supplements for the treatment or prevention of osteoporosis and for the immediate treatment of uh, acute hypocalcemia or uh, and hypocalcemic tetany. I'm sure you must know that because of the increased calcium levels, tetanus happens. Okay, so it is related to that. All right, then we have a uh, calcium supplements may cause hypercalcemia with the long term use. Hypercalcemia with the long term use. That is it, everybody. Thank you so much. And...